Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Mythlok with your host Nitin Nair. Mythological characters have always been confused with being gods, supernatural, being these amazing creatures that go beyond human comprehension. The practice of imparting supernatural abilities to animals or creating hybrid versions of animals and human beings is a practice that we still see today in modern uh, comic books, uh, video games and many other m- modes of art and expression which are a very important part of modern pop culture. But there is one set of characters in mythology who actually do not have any supernatural ability but have more or less stamped their mark in the various mythologies by sheer presence of character. What I mean by sheer presence of character is either heightened physical attributes that make them better warriors, intellect that make them more intelligent when compared to their peers, or by even having a certain code of conduct or moral ethics which ensure that they stand head over heels over their contemporaries in modern times. What happens with these mortal characters is that they are actually born as a human being and also die during the course of their storylines. This is a very important aspect that really separates mortals from the immortal gods or the demigods who tend to have a more non-linear storyline that means they appear and disappear as they please. Even demigods in many aspects, although they do exhibit mortality, they are considered to be manifestations of a god who in turn is immortal. We've talked about mortals from various other mythologies and one of the very important figures in Indian mythology is that of Indrajit. Indrajit might be the first negative or villainous character that we are actually featuring on this podcast and on the website, but he is one that has always captured my imagination and my interest, mainly because he was a proverbial prodigal son who was supposed to take over the reins of Lanka from his illustrious father Ravana, but unfortunately perished in battle to Lord Rama in the epic Ramayana. Indrajit was a prince of Lanka and the possessor of the kingdom of Indraloka. He is regarded as a great warrior in Hindu texts due to his participation in the Ramayana and the way in which he conducted himself throughout the epic. He was in possession of many celestial weapons and was also an expert at sorcery and magic. He was one of the first characters that we can see in Hindu epics that actually combined the art of warfare with that of magic. While many of the other mortals and characters within these texts tend to not mix these two because they felt that it was unethical, but Indrajit seemed to have a way to weave in his fighting abilities with his skills in magic, which also included the use of weapons that were blessed by the gods. Now these celestial weapons, you know many of them, the Brahmastra, Nagastra, etc., which were used by the more positive characters, but it was the skill of deception and uh, illusion that Indrajit brought into the art of warfare. Indrajit is claimed to have vanquished almost half the Vanara race in the, using the Brahmastra. This is unmatched in any of the ancient Hindu texts in terms of maximum number of deaths inflicted in a single battle. Known also as Meghnada, he was the greatest and most furious warrior on Ravana's side after Ravana himself. He was a great archer and unsurpassed grandmaster in the illusion warfare techniques. He was known to be in some depictions as a handsome man with striking good looks, while in others he was depicted more as a demon with looks that resembled those of the Rakshasas or the Asuras who were a different race of people in Indian mythology. Now, when he was born, the name Meghnada was chosen since it sounded like thunder during the time when he was born. He was the eldest son of Ravana and Mandodari. His father wanted his son to be the most supreme warrior, extremely knowledgeable and undefeated in battle. Ravana was a great astrologer who knew that to make his son immortal and have all the qualities that he wished, all the planets and constellations should align in a certain way. As all the planets feared him, they aligned so they came in the 11th house of Meghnada's horoscope. However, Shani or Saturn 
violated Ravana's orders and positioned himself in the 12th house, making him mortal. It is the only one flaw in the whole plan Ravana had that he did not expect Shani to really oppose him or rebel against his orders. And this one slight movement of that one planet ensured that Meghnatha became mortal and was eventually killed in battle by Lakshman. Indrajit's family was not mentioned in the original of Ramayana, but later versions mentioned his wife Sulochana, who was the daughter of the Sheshnag, who was the king of the serpents. If we look at other names in which he is mentioned across mythology, in Sanskrit the name Indrajit is translated as Conqueror of Indra, which was a title given to him after defeating the god Indra in battle. In Tamil, the word Lord of the Clouds is used to refer to him as his given name Meghnath can be split into Megham, which means clouds, and Nathan, which means Lord. He is also known as Vasavajit, Shakrajit, Varidananda, Dhanananda, and Ravana. Now, when we look at his powers and abilities and his skill set, Ravana was captured by Lord Indra and the other gods. As a dutiful son, Meghnatha attacked Indra and his elephant Airavata and captured Indra after defeating all the other devas and gods. Back in Lanka, it was decided to kill Indra at which point Lord Brahma intervened and requested for Indra's release. Meghnatha agreed and asked for immortality as a boon. So this was denied as granting immortality went against the laws of nature, but Brahma gave him a celestial chariot instead which made him immortal as long as he was Mount Dhamma. His mortality only came to play when he decided to disembark the chariot. Brahma was extremely impressed by the valor shown by Meghnatha in war, his poise after the war and his very clear ethical and moral code of conduct. He also bestowed upon him the name Indrajit, which like I mentioned meant conqueror of Indra and was a title that he proudly won. It is also believed that he was promised that he would only be killed by another mortal who had not slept for 14 years. Unfortunately, as stories go, Lakshmana, who actually ended killing Indrajit, had decided not to sleep for the 14 years in order to protect his brother Lord Rama and his sister in law Sita while they were in exile in the forest. In modern day times, Meghnatha or Indrajit is a popular figure in other Southeast Asian mythologies, especially Thai, Malaysian, Indonesian, and Sri Lankan mythology. As Sri Lanka is considered to be the erstwhile Lanka, which is mentioned in the Ramayana and other Indian epics, the focus on Ravana and Indrajit as positive characters in history or in mythology is quite prominent in Sri Lankan mythology as well. Overall, Meghnatha was one of those key deciding factors in the battle that ensured that Ravana could actually put up a fight against Lord Rama, who was an incarnation of the Supreme Lord Vishnu. Thank you very much for tuning in to another episode of Mythlok. This is your host Nitinaya signing off and reminding you once again, Mythlok is the home of mythology.